They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. I mean, there's there's a few movies I can think. There's actually just two movies where as soon as I got to the ends, I had to go back and start it from the beginning, like that second. Yeah. One was A Clockwork Orange. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that movie is just, you know, this just cost a 50th year anniversary. And uh, me and Jazz watched it, like, not too long ago. And it still hits, dude. The movie's incredible. But I only yeah. didn't watch it again because it was, like, 3 in the morning. Like, and, you know, like, <laughs> as, like, I'd be home from college break. And, you know, I was in college. So I didn't go to sleep, like, ever. So mm-hmm. I went I went to bed, like, at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I started the movie at 1 o'clock in the morning. Then at 3, three o'clock, I was just like, I'm going to bed. I'm too tired. That's a, th- that's a thick movie to start at 1 in the morning, dude. I know. Dude, <laughs> tell me. If I didn't know what I was getting into. I, 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 I saw Kubrick. Love Kubrick. Never saw the movie. Wanted to see the movie. So I watched it. Mm-hmm. And 3 in the morning, I was like, no, nah, I'll watch it in the morning. So I woke up the next morning and watched it again. But the other movie was Res Dogs, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, And But by the time that movie ended... I just went right back to the beginning and started it over. That movie was right. like 90 minutes, so it's 2.30. It's like, I can go yeah. back at 4. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that movie's perfect, too, because just the way that the story's told, you know, once you get to the end, you have a way better understanding yeah. of what, like, actually happened, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's that's kind of like, that's what storytelling is to me. And I, it's funny because I swear, I swear I saw this quote, but I cannot find it. So I don't know if I hallucinated and I made it up, but I'm pretty sure it's from the Safdie brothers and it was on good time. And they were like, the mark of a good movie is that it, it leaves you with something, you know, it, what that something is, it can be totally undefined. You might not understand it right away, but a movie that like you can't stop thinking about is a good movie. And this movie, Good Time, the way it ends, it's like I, I really don't want to give anything away about it, but it's a very fast paced movie. And then it kind of just hits a wall and you're like, whoa. And in that like wake of that, you're just like what was going on in this movie? And it's like a feeling inside you that you just need to get it out and like have a conversation about it. And what I love about doing Midnight Showing with Nash is that like, we'll watch a movie. I'll be like, I don't know if I like that, or I don't know if I really connected with that. And then just having that conversation with him about it nine times out of 10 will open my mind to something I didn't even notice in the movie. And we've been doing it long enough now that like, we'll be like, okay, we have an idea of what our conversation is going to be. Then he'll say one thing and my mind will do a million things. And I'm like, Whoa, I didn't even think about that. And then I'll say something and his mind will be like a thousand other things are like, where did, where did this go? What is this thinking of? And I think filmmaking and like storytelling is so cool because in theory, there's really no wrong answers. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's all subjective, but like, what's, what's your favorite aspect of, I guess the film, the creative filmmaking process. Like for example, mine is I've picked up a lot of uh, like sound design and sound mixing. Yeah. yeah. So like if like, if I'm watching a movie, I'll pick up, the different like aspects of what goes into the scene. And I can picture how it looks in premiere or audition. Cause like most of the sounds you hear on the, in a, on a movie um, was recorded, not on set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, including the dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's crazy. That, and that's one of those things where you think about it and you're like, no way they do it that way. Yeah. You know, you're like, no, no way they're in like, no, like, a studio, like, they're, like they're re-recording. Literally just, they'll literally just take like chain mail and just shake it. In yeah. front of a microphone, or they'll just they'll just get footage of like armor being thrown downstairs. I'm using like a medieval reference because it's something that makes yeah. loud noises, right? Yeah, or, like yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll, they'll cut trees and just get, put a microphone next to someone cutting trees and put it into the mm-hmm. movie. And you got to mix what audio levels go because it can't it has to mix with the volume, has to mix with the actor, has to mix with other sound effects. So it's like yeah. a sound effect will be recorded, but it, you can't really hear it by itself but when it's mixed yeah. with everything else it sounds perfect well and even i'll um i'll admit I, I i am in a relationship at this moment in time and she does love watching the bachelor and the bachelorette so I, at Fair this enough. moment in time i do watch the bachelor on a weekly basis and it is like pretty crazy when you start to listen to how much they edit these people down especially when nobody's on screen you can like i i um, edit audio professionally so like I kind of have more of an ear for it because I know how it sounds when things are like quickly cut like that but it's crazy just like 
the way that you'll feel like they're just building sentences that people didn't actually say or not necessarily didn't actually say but just cutting out massive chunks of it to like go along with the story and they have like these live events where there'll be like a crowd laughing and it's it's funny to think that like okay in the moment when someone actually made that joke it probably wasn't that actual line of laughing in that actual shot of the crowd and then it becomes weird because you're like was that shot of the crowd actually at the end of the thing you know that's kind of like the stuff in production that you don't really uh think about yeah, um, I, I call I call it my third eye, or, or yeah. in some cases my third ear. It's like I'm, I'm picturing what the editing process looks like. Even like with YouTube videos, yeah, I, I can I, I look and go, oh, I could do that in VMix. Yeah, right. Like yeah, I yeah. I understand how like I, I'm putting the pieces together and how to do it in my head. Yeah, and it's just like, dude, if I had if it's like if I had a budget, it's like the yeah. shit I think I could do because I would love to like do a I think even it's a scene. I don't want to do a whole movie because I would take. Screw that. But even yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah. scene of doing that kind of sound design, sound mixing, and the mastering and all that jazz. I think that would be incredible. 